Welcome back to Mental Break Simulation 3142. We've got a mansion to go to. Like father, like child, I will ride while you drive. And mansion ground is all the way up here. That looked like near the park. Nines? You're in for it now. You. What are you doing here? Whoa. Wandering the mystical maze of my mind. Out now. Huh? Do you also seek the missing Malkavian? You should get out of here. This place is bad news. Uh, pardon me. Your mouth is making mystical mush. Yet, it, he was like reverbing or echoing. I, I thought that was just me, to be honest with you. I didn't expect that to actually be a feature the game picked up on. Can I get up this way? Nope. I am apparently unable to will myself into breaking open the window and crawling inside. I don't know why my morality stops there. This is really like a wizard tower. I mean, look at that. All in all, that's a very pretty house. Now let's sneak inside and kill things. Why take the chance? See, ninja. I got the music and everything. This is gonna be my kind of place, I just got that feeling. Even though she's batshit crazy. I mean, did you hear the way she's... <laughs> Good grief. Have some self-control. Hmm, shinies. It is quite peculiar, the happenings I've been made to witness for my supernatural longevity. I am thinking of one unfortunate phenomenon in particular, of unique interest to my station, both as a professional and as a sufferer of this vampiric condition. It seems the stream of time has begun to erode the moorings of my chosen course of study, for the methodologies that gave birth to psychology are slowly disappearing. I find myself in an era that overlooks the physical component of psychological pathology time and again in favor of the sophistic practices of Freud. Phrenology, dactopintalism, and the rest of the old god has fallen by the wayside, its champions all silenced in death, with my unique exception. Would that I could make my voice heard again, although it may be suspicious should I return to popular medical discourse 50 years after my apparent death. Hmm. No, better that I continue my studies into the psychosis and seek One day, I will hold up my own cure as validation of the methods. I am confident no cure for my condition, no doubt my beloved wife lies within our figurative minds, waiting to be unlocked by the correct combination of memories that are to my childhood. I'm most certain it has nothing to do with the relationship between myself, my parents, and my children. I choose to stay in my place. In time, too, I will stay. Why wouldn't he be disappointed? Sigmund Freud is still as relevant today as he ever was. Hmm. 
I can't even try to pick that, so well, whatever. <laughs> no, he thinks it's hilarious. Perception at once shapes the mind and rolls over time. Time, however, erodes human perception and then turns, then in turn warps the mind. The mind is capricious, having various effects on perception, time, and the mind itself. With harmony, progress is made. Uh, that's a key to something. Oh. Mind. Time. I guess that's perception. I'm not really sure. I could have sworn I was highlighting on something else, though. Oh well. Hey, a stick. An unknown stick. Wickapug thistle. This petrified reed is not meant to fall into the hands of the damned, but vampires can benefit from its shamanistic magic all the same. Increases defense by one point. I will gladly take that. Good grief. Magic trinkets abound. Hey, sparklies. Another unfortunate casualty to Tide of Time. Insane asylums. I lament their loss, not only as brokerage houses for Perception the breadth and time. depth of human psychosis, but also I shall mourn the disappearance of that peculiar environment present only in an mm. insane asylum. That palpable atmosphere of time, perception, mind, churning bowels, the odiferous melange of freely flowing bodily humors, that gently rolling cacophony of distant sobs and screams. Mm. And muttered cursing at perceived enemies. I and thought there'd be more to that puzzle, but... of the lobotomized, like a newborn babe discovering the sky. Mm. Eh. I shall still find test subjects as surely as I find bloody sustenance in the night, but this climate, I fear, may never be replicated. I think I fucked up. Anyways, uh. Time, perception, mind. Mind, perception, time, mind. Did that do anything? No? Yes? Doesn't look like it. Maybe we'll get back to that later. I already got a knife. Sadly, I can't collect all of these and then sell them later. Without him, the rest of them should stay docile. But I know a way to make them even more docile. And I'm a little thirsty. Where did he find all of these ladies that look exactly the same, by the way? Isn't that a little weird? Anyways, I'm a ninja, and I need to do what ninjas do. I think. Can't go that way. I don't see anything particularly... Well, that door maybe.
You ladies just sit over there and mumble to yourselves. Everything's fine. I can see spark on his butt. Am I missing something? Ah. Yeah, I heard you up there, you crazy one. Like, I've got to talk, though. <laughs> nice handiwork. Not that funny, though. Is he... I think he must be dead because he's just in that thing. He ain't moving. Often I reflect with great regret on the missed opportunity that was my infector. Had I been conscious after the attack, I could have stopped the orderlies from locking her in the roaming pen. What I would give for just one interview, a few simple questions of the plague ridden woman who met her end that dawn. Of course, there is no guarantee she would have been any more helpful than my current crop of test subjects, you and wretches. Few could be called enthusiastic. Given the nature of the tests, I cannot expect the same fervor from all, but a modern cooperation could be appreciated. And yes, the one called John went so far as to gnaw off his arm and escape into the floorboards like some fearful rodent. I still hear him scurrying about at night. He must have made an atrocious mess. Gnawed off his damn arm? I mean, how did he not bleed out? My studies proceed at a languid pace. I'm mired in a foul ennui as my wife's illness advances. My subjects grow restless without proper supervision, but I cannot pull myself back from this black depression. How many nights I've wasted now, gazing from the tower walk, pondering the frailty of existence. Well, you and me both, Doc. Granted, it's a really pretty view. Corkscrew staircases, walkways high above. Yeah, this is a damn wizard tower. And you'll never tell me otherwise. Hmm? Well, you I have to kill. You're just in the way. Oh man, I th that what I thought. I can still hear the voice, man. That was a little creepy. Freaking shank her through the heart with a katana, and she just laughs about it. After decades of solitary study into this affliction, I have learned that it is by no means mine alone. 
Indeed, the city is home to an entire society of similarly afflicted individuals with whom I've only recently made contact. They are an understandably standoffish sort, by and large, but I have been able to confirm with that the condition guy. is indeed vandalism, which apparently comes in no a lot of different strains, each with a spectacular set of symptoms such as invisibility and even a sort of lycanthropy. Through numerous official interactions with the governing body of this secret society, I have concluded that their fundamental understanding of the vampiric condition is woefully lacking and mired in suspicion and pseudo-religious that would make a Turk ball for its fiction. Indeed, they seemed impressed with my studies and the eloquence with which I was able to present them. Apparently, the typical sufferer of my particular strain of vampirism is far from the vanguard of the king's English. So impressed were they that they even offered me an office in their government, a rather high office by the sound of things, I believe I shall accept. If nothing else, it should provide a lofty vantage point from which to observe the breadth and epidemiology of the affliction so that I may move more expeditiously toward the cure. Now, the moment he becomes primogen, still... Now, this looks familiar. Chaos, like the mind, can be understood only through scientific process. Order, however, is as good as the perception thereof. Crap. A multi-layered switch puzzle. Oh yeah, you keep laughing. I have accepted the role of Primogen for Clan Malkavian, the dreadfully winsome label applied to the particular strain of vampirism I suffer, so named for some supposed vampire father figure of old, or poppycock grown from a backward culture that seems interminable to in the children's tales and the fiction of Victorian romance when it should concern itself with the science behind their suffering. No matter. For I have taken this office for no greater reason than to advance my research. I must make mention, however, that even among my would-be peers in this governing body of vampires, the level of paranoia and superstition is frightening. Their intelligence is not the question, no, Order. as they courted me for this appointment, I had to suspect that their overtures were hand-tailored to what must be my obvious infatuation with reason, for the devil would do well to have such honey-tongued tempters. Even so, I could not help but notice the dressing of language these vampire leaders chose for their siren song. Whether it is born of habit, from addressing their unwashed, ill-educated subjects, or from their own deep-seated beliefs, their linguistic flourishes belie a faith in superstition over the providence of empirical reason that must be an all-pervasive theme in this society of darkest night. That's all now I'm doing it too. <laughs> ah, well, don't touch the laser beams. That is your first and only clue. Sparklies. Unknown. Frenzy check modifier plus one. The savvy fan could only have belonged to a ferocious predatory beast. You feel at ease knowing there's one less of those in the world. Decreases your chance to frenzy. Now for me as a Malkavian, this is awesome. However, if you were a gangrel, you would just want to pawn that thing. Gangrels want to frenzy. That's their barbarian rage. Oh. I guess maybe you have to have at least one open? Oh, 
I mean, that's the damn door. Uh, am I missing something? I'm certainly not going to try and jump through that. Well, whatever. I'm not sure what I did just then. She still thinks it's hilarious, though. Ah, we unlock the inner sanctum. And the next time, we're going to explore that inner sanctum. Maybe we'll find grout. Maybe we'll find more treasure. This place seems to be loaded with it. Until then, farewell, vampire.